Everybody, I wanted to make a uh, video about budget astrophotography, and that's kind of an oxymoron because uh, astrophotography is expensive. Uh, all the time you see on the in the groups, people asking about, you know, is this is this two hundred and fifty dollar telescope on this really shaky mount good for astrophotography? And no, it's not. Um, it's not even good for astronomy. Um, I wanted to go over my build and uh, the uh, the bargain hunting and I've been doing over the last. It's taken me about two years to get this together. Um, first, I got a uh, the optical tube is an eight inch Newtonian. It was originally a a, a Dobsonian um, that I found on Facebook Marketplace for a hundred dollars. It's got a pretty decent mirror in it. The, the optics were really good. The uh, the focuser was crap. I had to put a new focuser on it. So the the tube was I got for a hundred bucks. Obviously took it off the mount and put it on an equatorial mount. So I got the tube for a hundred bucks. The uh, focuser cost a hundred and fifty. Put a better focuser on it. And I had to shorten up the tube by a half an inch so I could get prime focus um, with it. So that, that took some work, but uh, so all, all together the, uh, the, the, the optical tube costs about $250. Um, the mount is an old Celestron CGE. Uh, if you've ever owned one or used one, you know they are uh, kind of a love-hate relationship. The, the problems with these were the, the cables were, were a huge weak link and um, the original cables would just break in, in a month. And uh, this is this is the, the Gary Bennett cable modification with much better cables on them. But even with these, I noticed when, uh, when the temperature started dropping, it still uses, used this outer casing as a ground. And as this shrunk when it got cold, it would still lose its ground. And, you know, the, the wonderful engineers at Celestron, bless them, uh, when uh, when the mount loses ground, it starts slewing wildly and completely loses track of where it is. And uh, so losing ground is not an option. So I, so it was still doing it, so I just ended up hardwiring a ground right to it with nice sturdy connections that aren't going to come loose. So uh, <clears throat> with some modification... Uh, I got that thing working good. I bought it broken off of uh, Astro Mart for five hundred dollars. Plus, it cost about one hundred and fifty to ship. Um, so I, I had to work on it quite a bit to get it work, get the to get the ground issue fixed because there was a broken ground inside the uh, pier mount inside of the the electronics pier too. There was a broken ground. I had to fix that. So after I got it working. Um, I haven't had any problems with it since then. My counterweights, you can see, are incredibly janky, but they work. Um, you know, a few bucks there. Uh, I made the uh, power bank myself out of some DC to DC buck converters. Probably about 25 bucks in parts there. Made uh, the, dew sh dew, the dew heater myself out of some nichrome wire the uh power supply i got that backup uh machine that was about 120 and then that wasn't enough to power everything all night so i just keep it on a big deep cycle battery i keep those connected all the time for charging and power that's enough juice to run it all night um so that the so that was 120. The deep cell ba battery was 70 bucks, so almost almost 200 bucks for enough juice to run it all night. Um, the DSLR, that's a that's a 7D Mark II. I already had that, so because of photography, um, so I don't really want to put that in the cost because you can get cameras a lot cheaper than that. Um, the guide scope and guide camera I bought new because I didn't want to mess around with them. That was like 400 bucks. Um, so, I mean, you see, we're using the term budget astrophotography kind of sarcastically. And uh, you just really can't get into this hobby cheaply. And this, I mean, this is a really cobbled together, janky production here. 
And, uh, you know, I've taken some good pictures with it. It works. Uh, but, yeah, you just, I mean, when you think about it, it makes sense, though. I mean, a, a camera is, is a marvel of engineering, right? You got, you know, the lenses, the shutters, all the computer <clears throat> programming that goes into it. And that's just to take a picture of your kids. Now, you, you go and extend that to try to take pictures of objects that are, you know, outside of our atmosphere, gathering light from very faint objects from hundreds of thousands, thousands of light years away. And, uh, you know, you can imagine, you, you can't do it cheaply. Uh, so, I hope, this is, I mean, and you could do it cheaper than I did. Definitely, you could, you could get a cheaper guide scope, or not guide at all, just use tracking. Uh, you know, better a better power supply system. I'm sure you could find savings that I didn't. Uh, <clears throat> but that's about the bare minimum you can expect to get into it. And that th this setup gives me about a one degree field of view, which is which is pretty nice for uh, some deeper stuff like smaller galaxies and things like that. And then uh, you just lay out mo mosaics to do bigger objects. Um, but yeah, that's I just wanted to go over my setup and how much it cost, and uh, hopefully that gives you some ideas for what you want to do. So in addition to my budget setup is the laptop that I use for imaging. Um, I traded a bottle of whiskey for that to my brother. And then I drank half of it. So actually I got that laptop for half a bottle of whiskey. It's, it's an older i5 machine. It's kind of a piece of junk. The screen's a little screwed up, but it uh, doesn't take much of a laptop to do imaging. Um, the sky's a little bit hazy. But it's not terrible. We should be able to get a little something done here. Let's see what we can do. Alright, guiding's about a half a second. That's good. Let's see what we can get here.